every day without fail. I tell my wife, you know, I want to be 18 again. I want to be a teenager again. I want to be a part of this wonderful change that is happening in the world. The immense opportunities that are facing the world today and which we can actually make an impact on. And if I can't do it, I'm delighted today to be with all of you and you can do it. So what are some of these things and what is it that we are actually looking for? See, if you look around, today the world is full of stories about unicorns, right? Every day people talk about Yet another unicorn, somebody worth more than a billion dollars, somebody worth five billion dollars, somebody worth ten billion dollars. Is that what life is about? Is that what we think drives us? You know, for the last more than 20 years, I've been working closely with startups and with young people like yourselves. And I've rarely seen a truly successful startup which started to just make money. Nobody does that. So what is it that people really do? What makes a successful startup? I'll tell you what I have understood from my own experiences. The first thing I find is that people who start something are passionate. And I mean really, really passionate about solving a big problem that really needs solving. So they don't think about, oh, she made a billion dollars doing this, I will also do that. That's not typically what they do. They really solve something that is a big pain point today where they live. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, we can all wish, we can all wish that I can solve all the problems in this world. But do I have some ability? Do I have something unique that I can bring that could be a technical ability, that could be access to data, that could be access to market, it could be anything, but it needs to be something special. And increasingly, what is happening now is that the kind of problems we need to solve and we can solve are more and more complex. And therefore, one person or a small group of people cannot solve these problems. And therefore, one more ability that these people have is an ability to bring together a very diverse team and make them into one cohesive group. And believe you me, that is not as easy as it sounds. And therefore, the last thing that these people need is an ability to lead such groups. And one more thing in that ability to lead, it is also governance and it is also ethics and values. I have not seen too many companies succeed with questionable ethics. I promise you that. Right? So that is the first thing, is that passion. The second thing is the ability. The third thing is perseverance and flexibility. Now, sometimes they look opposite to each other, don't they? We say we are passionate about something, therefore we want to persevere. Easy to understand, right? And in this journey, you will find many setbacks. It's not easy to be an entrepreneur. Every day there are problems. People don't know you, people don't trust you, people say, why should I? What do you have? You, you are a little kid, what do you know about solving the world's big problems, right? So there are so many prejudices, so many biases, so many difficulties that come in your way and you have to continue to persevere, right? That's all right. But what does flexibility mean then? See, what happens is that when we go on this journey, we think that the road from here to there is this straight road. But straight roads, first of all, are well traveled. Everybody else has done it. If they have not succeeded, why would you succeed? So what happens is that you have to try new roads, new paths. And when you think of those new paths, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't work. 
you know, if I ever write my autobiography, I think I've made more mistakes than I've succeeded. I failed so many times, so many times on some of the things that I thought, well, this is definitely going to succeed. And they did succeed. So, therefore, you know what? That is where perseverance comes in. That's where flexibility comes in. That's where we need to really say, okay, I thought it was a great idea. I really believed in it. But somehow it doesn't seem to work. How can I come back and say what went wrong in it? Because the idea may not be wrong, but the way we are approaching it could be wrong. Sometimes what happens is you are too early with an idea, and therefore the world is not you know, willing to listen. Look at what happened you know, in around 2000 when the internet started, there were so many great ideas, but the world simply wasn't ready. It's only much, much later in 2009, 10, later that many of those support. So, so there are many different reasons why you have to be flexible. So that's the third. The fourth is something that at least we in India somehow don't appreciate as much. That is an ability to tell your story. Just having passion is great. Having perseverance is great. Knowing how to solve it. But how do you bring everybody on board? How do you bring everyone to support you? Look at the great political leaders. You may say, oh, they are idiots, oh, they are biased, oh, they are something. But they have that ability to tell their story most convincingly. And every successful entrepreneur has that same ability. She can convince you to come and join her and support her idea. And therefore, you have to develop that ability, that ability to tell your story together with the passion is what makes the great combination. Right? So those are some of the ingredients that all of us need to have if we are going to really do something big, something that is transformational, right? Now, I am not saying that every one of us must do something that is transformational. I think, you know, success should never be measured by did I build something big, did I make a lot of money, does the world know me? No. I think success should be measured by how happy you are, by how content you are, and by, yes, when I look back, I did what I wanted to do. And I think I will underline that if I can underline that virtually. Success is doing what you want to do. But if you do want to change the world, if you do want to have a big impact in the world, what are some of the big things that are likely to be important in the future? If you see the world now, E-commerce was the first big thing. After that have come things like SaaS and you know, a few other deep tech. AI, ML has become all pervasive, etc. But where will you use this? Where can we use enormous great technologies like large data mining, AI, ML, IOTs, etc. So I'm going to suggest to you three big areas where I think you can make a big difference and the world and the society will be grateful to you. And the first is environment. Look around us. I was in Australia in late 2019 and there were fires everywhere. That was pre-COVID. Right? Then there have been fires, continue to be fires in the West in the United States. Vancouver, of all the places, had fires. Germany had floods. And now look at our own country. From Uttarakhand in the top to Kerala at the bottom, we have massive floods and problems in October. Just think of the massive changes and disruptions that are even in our own Hyderabad, we have had floodings last year. Something unheard of. So let us acknowledge and accept that lots of things need to be done. Now, in those, obviously we have to change our own behaviors, right? I cannot drive a big fancy gas guzzling car and take a private jet and go all over the world and then say I am concerned about the environment. So we have to do it. Governments have to do it. Let's face it. 
But the big things that we have to do is to see how we can use technology to quickly and effectively solve these problems. So that's number one. The second thing, obviously, is health. We've seen with COVID, just making money is not enough. If one COVID can completely destroy your health, what is the use of all the money? And therefore, good health for all and for all, I underline, not just for us people who are well, good health for all is going to be, and technology is going to really make health easily accessible across the world. So that's a big, big thing for and I think, I hope many of you take food. And the last thing is food. As more people come out of poverty, they will eat more. And we cannot simply afford to have bigger farms and larger farms and do deforestation. So how do we become smart about using food? How do we use food that does not deplete the carbon? These are going to be some of the really big interesting problems. Once again, I want to emphasize, you don't have to take the responsibility of doing this. You are not interested in doing it. You don't have to solve just these problems. Your passion may be different. It could be sports, it could be entertainment, it could be anything. But whatever you do, follow your heart and do the best you can. Have a great life ahead. Good luck.